Hey everybody, so before I go on, um, I met Batman today. We, uh, we drove by, uh, we went to a circus, um, a traveling circus that was here, a Shriner Circus. Hopefully uh, you viewers don't have a problem with uh, elephants uh, at the circus, like some people do who are protesting. Anyway, we went to the circus, after the circus, uh, we were driving by a comic store, and they were having some kind of event, and parked out in front, uh, in the parking lot, was this a Batmobile, a very, very snazzy Batmobile. Um, the license plate said Dark Knight. Uh, and it was an actual, non a real Ontario license plate, so it was a real thing. Um, and uh, Batman was there. He was uh, definitely a Dark Knight. He, um, uh, he was awesome, great costume, and he was sweating buckets. It was a very hot day, and uh, we felt really bad for the guy. But uh, we took a picture. My wife actually took a selfie with him. Um, but yeah, he was a uh, good sport being out there in the heat and, uh, good for him. Anyway, on to the show. So I ran, um, a game of In Her Majesty's Name at a local, um, uh, gaming convention. It was the, uh, first of its kind. It was, uh, it's called Hold the Line and it's, uh, here in Toronto and it was, uh, today was the first one. I only managed to make it out for the evening since I was at the circus and, and meeting Batman during the day. Um, I got there a little... Um, a little late, about 6 o'clock, uh, in time to uh, set my table up and uh, do a little shopping. But uh, this is what my table looked like. Um, um, I've got a, a green um, GW grass mat, um, and then in the middle I have a, uh, I believe it's a, maybe, th it might be 30 by 30 um, a Zuzzy mat that I got a few years ago when I was uh, running... Games of Fantastic Worlds, um, and I haven't used it very much recently, but um, it worked out pretty well for this game. Um, I also have um, the Crescent Root um, Series 2. Um, because I don't have a lot of walls, I uh, broke up the space with some craters. Uh, there's some sandbags and barrels and um, oil drums and a crate, I can't find the rest, from Pegasus Hobbies. Um, the crates are, uh, not the crates, the craters are also from Pegasus Hobbies, I believe. Um, just some trees around the edge from, um, HeroScape. And, um, I think that's, that's pretty much it. Um, uh, at this point, um, I didn't know how many players I was going to have. I didn't have anybody signed up. And, uh, by the time I finished setting up, I'm looking around and a lot of people had left for the, uh, for the day having, uh, had a long morning and afternoon. So I was kind of worried I wasn't going to get anybody, so I was probably going to be playing some other game. But uh, just after, just around 7, when in the, uh, the slot started, I had um, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5 people um, show interest in playing. So um, one of them um, decided to play the, uh, the scenario itself, and I'll explain that in a second. But, um, so we had, you know, 4.5 players, which was pretty good, especially when I was afraid I wasn't going to have anybody. Now, the scenario I chose, um, because it was uh, a multiplayer game, um, I chose a, um, a bit of a twist on the Catch the Pigeon scenario, where in the original scenario, you have a pigeon uh, flying around randomly uh, around the board, and the, team, the teams want to catch it, um, take it off the table, and if they do, they get 20 points on top of any points they get for killing um, um, other models or other leaders. Now, because it was multiplayer, I decided that we needed three pigeons, and um, I turned them into um, automaton pigeons, since um, I have three mechanical doves from Malifaux. So they started off in the center of the table, and um, the one player, uh, Kyle, who I, um, I've been playing with recently, he ran the the, the mechanical uh, automaton pigeons, and uh, he moved them, not randomly, um, but he moved them uh, up to nine inches around the table, and he kept them uh, running away or flying away from the different companies. Um, for some reason, I didn't take pictures of the companies. Um, however, they're all my models, so you've seen them before. Um, at the top left is Lord Kerr's company. Um, the top right is the British Rifle Company. The bottom right are the core, and the bottom left are the um, the Ortega family from Malifaux. So what I wanted to do was um, showcase that in this real set, you can build pretty much anything you want. Um, whatever models you have, you can uh, give them um, stats and points in this game. Um, uh, 
on top of that scenario, what I did was everyone started off with a, around 170 points out of their total models. And once their model started dying, they could uh, get replacements in um, up to the value of the uh, missing models. So um, some of the, uh, uh, the, the Ortegas and Lord Kerr, they both started off with four models. The um, British Rifle Company started off with six. And the core, I believe, started off with maybe five. Um, and by the end, everyone had uh, enough deaths that they brought in reinforcements. Um, I also had them start um, six inches away from the, um, the corners of the gray mat. So um, what you see here is just the, the initial setup. Uh, here's the next picture. They, uh, they've already started the turn. You can see uh, in the very center, you can see the little blue thing. That's one of the doves. Um, the doves have already started flying around, and if you look carefully, you can see doves near the center of the table having spread out and starting to move around. The first turn, they moved randomly, but um, afterwards, Kyle moved them um, of his own accord. Um, you can also see where the um, different companies are starting, and they're uh, they're heading in. Um, all the players were new to this game. Um, one player had uh, owns the rules. Um, uh, Kyle, of course, he's played. We played the other day. Um, but everyone else uh, was new to the game, so it was good to have um, some new people. Um, this is the first time I taught the game, so um, a few things uh, we missed initially, but they came up fine later. Um, a number of rules, um, I made uh, I made executive decisions uh, one way or the other in terms of uh, you know things like cover and whether certain abilities could uh, certain abilities could be worked in different ways. So. Um, uh, sometimes I just had the player make a pluck roll, and if they made the the roll, then I gave them the benefit, and um, that stood for later on. So, um, just a few different times, and you know, as a as a GM, I'm I'm allowed to do that. Um, so here, uh, I think Kyle's rolling for something, but I'm not sure. Um, you can see everyone is moving up into the uh, towards the center of the table. Um, up top, Lord Kerr's company and the rifle company. Um, they're gonna go head to head. Um, they're gonna be shooting at each other a lot. Um, actually, the uh, the British Rifle Company is being caught in uh, in a bit of a pincer movement um, from the core as well, and um, they've got some good shooters. And um, a few British drop off pretty early, um, but uh, but yeah, he he stays in the game. So let's see. Um, this is further into the game. Um, you can see a couple models are. Uh, this couple of the Ortegas are moving up to the center of the table. The core have spread out and are staying where they are to shoot. Um, the British rifles and the uh, and Lord Kerr, they're going to start um, shooting at each other through the building, around the building. Um, here is uh, the core uh, heavy machine gunner. He's taking uh, a nice look around the battlefield at what he can see. Uh, here is Santiago and Abuela. From, uh, from Alifo, but um, pointed up properly in in Her Majesty's name, and I, I tried to stick to the flavor that they have in Malifo, giving them some of the similar abilities. Um, but uh, this Santiago, he's kind of a beat stick. He, uh, he ended up finally running up to the bird. Um, uh, I think he shot it point blank and uh, and picked it up uh, a little after that picture was, was taken. Um, here are the British rifles um, taking over this building and uh, using the cover and the windows. And um, the uh, mid, mid top right, you can see um, one of the riflemen catching one of the pigeons. So he's gonna he's gonna tackle it and uh, or try to tackle it. They're very elusive, you know. These mechanical pigeons. Um, here is Lord Kerr's company. Lord Kerr's company's corner. Uh, they're in this building and around this building, using it as cover and taking shots at the riflemen. Um, now the heavy gunner had been shot up, and from this this point, you can if you look at the top right, just in between the tree and that little uh, outbuilding, you can see a little um, dark smudge. That's actually Nino Ortego, Ortega. He's the uh, machine gunner, and he's been um, he had a, a shooting match with the core heavy gunner. And eventually, Nino won and uh, took out the uh, the machine gunner. Um, let's see. Uh, later, late, late, late in the game, we had a bunch of, um, well, actually a couple of fights. And you can see here, um, there's a three-on-one um, against the um, 
British Rifle Company's captain, and on the right there's a huge melee, um, and you can't see it, but there is a dove right uh, in there near the right, so a big hubbub around that um, that dove, and uh, we made a couple um, decisions on how uh, melees would work, especially with all these uh, figures, so we, um, we kind of paired people off, uh, moved them around so they could um, be paired off, and... Uh, we figure, you know what, it's, it's, it's fine, it's, uh, there's a swirling melee and people are moving around, so, um, we got that. Here is a, uh, actually this is a shot of the board, uh, at the end of the game. At the very top you can see the, uh, British Rifleman who left the board with the, uh, with the dove that he captured, and in the end he had managed, uh, managed to, to kill enough of the, um, Lord Curse Company to get, I think it was like 22 points, or maybe, maybe 23 uh, is that possible? Twenty three points. Well, about twenty two points. Um, and the other scores were uh, like uh, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen, or something like that. So a very close run for second. But um, the British Rifles, even though they they did t take a lot of hits, and um, they were uh, they were given first blood. They were uh, the first to go. Um, that drummer kept on beating his drum, so um, they ended up winning. Um, even though the Ortegas were the first to get off the table with a dove, and um, the core were the, f the ones who f drew first blood, but uh, really uh, a, a good game. I'm glad the the four players ended up uh, enjoying the game. Um, a lot of really good jokes, uh, like fun jokes. A lot of a lot of good humor. Um, a lot of poor rolls and a lot of fantastic lucky rolls. A lot of tens coming up, um, especially the core who. Um, we started referring to as uh, the turkeys. Uh, we couldn't decide if they looked like um, Muppets from Dark Crystal um, or turkeys, but we ended up uh, calling them turkeys. So a lot of turkey jokes, a lot of uh, plucking jokes. Um, the Ortegas apparently wanted to eat the birds. Um, Lord Kerr, um, Ernie who played him, had uh, uh, had the accent going uh, for the game. Um, and uh, yeah, the British Rifles were uh, ended up... Uh, being resilient and doing uh, her her Majesty um, some justice and uh, doing their duty for her. So anyway, that was uh, that's that game and it was it was good. I'm I'm glad it, it it went the way it did. I'm very happy with the crescent root um, terrain. It worked really well. It looked really good on the table. Um, I'm happy with the, the terrain overall. I think it worked out just fine. The models great. Um, the rule system uh, I enjoy it. It's um, it's a good one. I like that you can build any uh, model um, that you have. You can build it into the game. Uh, not uh, not not a, a wow uh, rule set, I'm going to be honest. It's not, uh, it hasn't uh, really taken me um, by storm. I'm not, um, I'm not, like, you know, going to run out and tell everyone they need to get it, but I do recommend playing it. Um, if you know someone that has it, um, I would definitely play it. Um, and you know what, for the the price you're going to pay, uh, like around $17 or so, um, give or take, uh, it's a pretty cheap rule set, and I actually do recommend it as a rule set to pick up, um, especially because you can use whatever models to play it. Um, I do recommend um, both Spartan models um, for Dystopian Legions and North Star's, uh, I guess, pseudo-official um, models for the game. Um, good sculpts. Um, Fun to paint, easy to paint, um, good to paint, uh, good stuff. So I, I, I do recommend the game. Um, I'm not going to put it up as my favorite game, but I will say that it is a good game, and I will definitely be looking forward to getting it on the table more uh, for myself and for other players. Um, here's some shots of some of the other tables that I managed to see at the end of the day. Now, um, mind you, I missed a lot of what was on the table. There were... Um, uh, quite a few other games played in the morning and in the afternoon that I didn't get to see. So um, that's that's too bad. But uh, next time I will definitely be around for the whole day. I'll make sure I have no other um, things booked for that day. Anyway, here is a game of Dystopian Wars, which um, I think always looks fantastic. Again, I'm a big fan of Spartan models. No matter what you use the, uh, the models for, they do a great job. Um, here they're playing force on force, and I think a number of the models, the infantry especially, are um, old mongoose um, battlefield evolution models, and I have a I have a bunch of those, so it was neat to see them um, on the table again. I've I've seen mine in, in buckets a few times, 
but um, they're not bad models. They're you know prepaints. Yeah, if you get them for cheap, they're uh, they're cheap prepainted models uh, for for modern or um, near future um, engagements. The buildings I really liked. I'm I'm always on the lookout for cool looking Middle Eastern buildings, and these um, looked really good. And you can see there's a a hot mat underneath, um, often used for Wild West, but works just as fine for uh, Middle Eastern. And uh, again, you know what? The buildings do look good. I, I wish I got the name of the uh, the makers of those uh, buildings. Here's a a, a, a four table setup for um, a Napoleonic game in uh, in the Spanish main. So there's a large chunk that is um, given over to pirates and uh, pirates and I guess the navy. And then there's a town that I, I don't know if it's being raided. I didn't really check during the game. But um, here's another shot. I think it was such a great board it deserved two pictures. And uh, it was it's big. It's I guess it's 8x8. Eight eight. That's a really big board. Um, 15 mil, I believe it was. Um, and a really cool setup. So hopefully the game went well. Here is the obligatory Death Star. Um, I think every gaming convention should have a Death Star run. And sadly, I didn't get to play this one, but I did play it. Uh, play this scenario um, uh, like uh, maybe a couple months ago at a friend's place who uh, built his own Death Star setup. And it's um, quite a cool um, setup. I uh, I like it. I like the game. Um, not a lot of, you know, a lot of people do. Uh, of course, a lot of people do. It's, it's, I think, one of the most popular minis games uh, out there right now. Um, uh, great looking models. Real sets, pretty cool. But um, otherwise, uh, pretty pretty cool. Pretty cool setup here. And uh, here's a, a game that started a bit later, but this is Infinity. Um, a game that I'd like to play some more of. Um, and I think it's uh, Necromunda. Um, or is it Mordheim? One of those um, uh, sets of buildings. So um, simple terrain, um, but uh, he painted them up and they, uh, they, they look really good. And apparently the games that they played were good. So anyway, this all happened at Hold the Lion, a, uh, a new, hopefully quite annual um, convention for, um, for minis gaming here in Toronto. So if you are in the area or if you'd like to know more, you can go to the Toronto Historical Miniatures Gamers um, site and uh, hopefully there will be more information about when this event will happen again. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed um, your look at uh, my In Her Majesty's Name game. Um, hopefully there will be more of it in the f near future. Um, I will get those Prussians put up in the near future and um, yeah, hopefully I'll be uh, playing the game because there's, uh, there's a lot in it, you know, um, a lot of scenarios to try, a lot of different uh, scenario complications and locations to try, so um, I think it could be uh, it could be a fun game. If, if, uh... Hope you're having a great weekend. See you later. Bye.